Hello and Minglaba. Welcome to Myanmar Today. I'm Aga Jo with the latest news and reports from around Myanmar. Reporter Willison covered a story on Myanmar's effort in plastic awareness campaigns. Bi Bing got a report on Agri Livestock Myanmar 2019, the International Agriculture and Livestock Production Exhibition and Conference, as well as current status on Myanmar agri livestock sector. Jianai has a story on media engagement in capital market and key excerpt from recent media workshop for Myanmar capital market. And a special story on Ninzi Gong Hong for the aged, which is also heaven for the elderly in need. So before we get to the reports, let's check on some local news. In local news, President delivers keynote speech at International Anti-Corruption Day commemoration. Nebido celebrated International Anti-Corruption Day at the Myanmar International Convention Center 2 yesterday morning and President U Wimian delivered a keynote speech. Firstly, President U Wimian delivered the keynote speech. Next, Anti-Corruption Commission Chairman U Aungji explained the implementation of the Anti-Corruption Commission's strategy plan. He said there are five areas in the strategy plan and they are 1. Building strong foundations for effective prevention, investigation and prosecution. 2. Integrity and development skills. 3. Cooperation with the domestic and international organizations in prevention and countering activities. 4. Safeguarding national budget and assets and interests of all citizens. And 5. Creating a corruption-free economic environment. In local news too, State Councilor Dong San Suu Kyi arrives at The Hague of Netherlands. The Myanmar delegation led by the State Councilor and Union Minister for Foreign Affairs, Dong San Suu Kyi, left Nebido on 8 December morning for oral proceedings before contesting the case filed by Gambia to the International Court of Justice at The Hague of the Netherlands. Flying via Bangkok, Thailand, they arrived in Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands, at 6.15 p.m. local time on 8 December. They were welcomed by Ms. Pascal Grotenhoes, the director of the Protocol Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Myanmar Ambassador to the Netherlands, Uso Linhan, and officials at the Skifo Airport. The state councillor and Myanmar delegation left Amsterdam in motorcade for The Hague, where Myanmar citizens in the Netherlands greeted them. Myanmar will strictly combat the illegal flow of goods into the country through the sea routes with the help of maritime police, according to a 31st regular meeting of entrepreneurs with the Private Sector Development Committee, led by Vice President U Min Sui, held on 8 December at the Republic of the Union of Myanmar Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry. Despite the low volume of illicit goods in airline cargo, a large number of goods are illegally entering the country through sea routes and border routes in Shan and Gain states. Micro, small and medium enterprises in the border areas struggle to run their businesses due to the inflow of illegal goods. Therefore, the PSDC has formed illicit trade control and prevention teams in the nine regions and states. There were 1,065 cases of illegal trade registered as of October this year, with the teams confiscating illicit goods worth of an estimated 15.64 billion jets. That's all with the local news, and now we are moving on to our first report. Toxic chemicals leached out of plastic are found in the blood and tissue of nearly all of us. Exposure to them is linked to cancers, birth defects, impaired immunity, endocrine disruption, and other ailments. Plastic is not only dangerous to humans, but also for the nature and the natural habitats. Therefore, to spread the awareness and to reduce the use of plastic in Myanmar, towards plastic-free solution was started on 9th December at the Vodahote in Yangon. Well, listen, tell us full report. Plastic waste is fast becoming a widely recognized problem. While it is an important material for our country economy, providing multiple benefits to modern day living, plastic can take thousands of years to biodegrade. It takes up valuable space in landfill sites and it polluting the natural environment, having a significant impact on our oceans. While getting rid of plastic waste is the primary environmental problem, the production process is a leading cause of carbon emissions contributing to global warming. 
It takes a lot of energy and resources to make plastic, with more than 90% being produced from fossil fuel resources. Expert believes that if the current trends continue in 30 years' time, 20% of global oil consumption and 15% of global carbon emissions will be associated with plastic production. Creating bottled water takes 20 times energy than it does to produce tap water. Therefore, with the aim to spread the awareness and do promotion, plastic campaign activities in Myanmar are highlighting the words for hours, which means reduce, reuse, recycle, and recovery, which is the main theme of global plastic activity. The campaign to highlight this team in Myanmar towards a plastic-free solution campaign was held on 9 of December at the Hotel Hotel in Yangon in collaboration between United Nations Environmental Program and Global Environmental Information Display. In this campaign, the photos related to environmental issues related to the use of plastics were displayed for the visitors. Speaking to the media on how far the impacts of using plastic has already affected Myanmar, Wu Tong Han, Group CEO of Max Myanmar Holdings Company Limited, said. Uma bo no loyang biolo si, do lama hindi mo ro plastic. Tapi mito yaro yung umiyo a toro litan si na lupiyo jare. Tama do ri kolong tiya yaku di lanjari di yautan. If we are to take an example, we don't see plastic much on the streets of Yangon. But the bitter truth is our wards and sea wages are filled with plastics in reality. Some of these plastics may be collected, but a huge amount of these plastics go to the sea wage without proper filtering, and this plastic also blocks the sea wage. And if dumping place get fire, it will bring a bad odor to the whole city in Yangon, which we have already experienced in the past. So we need to find the solution for all these issues. Fortunately, so far in Myanmar, it is yet too late to prevent our environment from plastic. But there are some countries which cannot do anything about plastic dump anymore and they have lost control over it. Therefore, we are not yet too late. We can still start over to prevent our nation from becoming a plastic dump. According to the report at the event, Myanmar also needs a proper laws when it comes to plastic. The law that will prevent Myanmar from plastic packaged goods and items from abroad and most importantly, the government and non-governmental organizations need to accelerate plastic campaign to the public where the public will have a wide view of using plastic and understand the negative impacts it brings to environment. Human health just like other nature is also directly related to the state of environment which contributes significantly to it although it depends on the quality of air we breathe, the food we eat and the water we drink. Ecosystem, planet's life support system are becoming degraded by climate change, pollution, agricultural practices and urban development. Demonstrating the critical linkage between health and environment is the only fourth stage. What is important is how we respond. Speaking to the media, Professor Masayuki Sagakibara, a professor at Resource Institute for Humanity and Nature, said, ASEAN countries have uh, these problems on the environmental issue, but especially, so Myanmar recently started development, and then, so we so just want to start a dialogue with so Myanmar people and then Myanmar government for protecting the nature. Because and so Japan already lose a lot of natures for economical development. And then I hope so just Myanmar will so protect nature and then so think about the sustainable development. This is Williamson reporting for MI Radio. That's the story on Myanmar's effort in plastic awareness campaigns. And uh, all right, we move on to the weather forecast now. And in Yangon, we can expect a partly sunny morning with pleasant day with sunshine. And is warned the air quality will be unhealthy for sensitive groups. There will be clear and cool weather late at night. The temperature throughout the day will be in the mid 20s with a sharp drop to 15 degrees Celsius at night time. And there is 0% chance of rain for the day with wind gusts at 11 kilometers per hour. 
In Nebido, we can expect mostly sunny weather throughout the day and a cool and clear night. The temperature throughout the day will be in the mid 20s, as well as with、uh, wind gusts at 7 km per hour. In Mandalay, we can expect mostly sunny and comfortable weather in the afternoon and throughout the day. Temperature throughout the day will be in the mid 20s with wind gusts at 9 km per hour. Stay with us, we have another report coming up, and then we'll check on the stocks and currency exchange rates. For the second report of the day, Agri Livestock Myanmar 2019, the International Agriculture and Livestock Production Exhibition and Conference organized by Myanmar Livestock Federation, was opened by Ute Mountain, Speaker of Yangon Region Luto, at Myanmar Expo Hall in Yangon on 5th December morning. Bi Ding has a story. Agri Livestock Myanmar 2019, the International Agriculture and Livestock Production Exhibition and Conference organized by Myanmar Livestock Federation, was opened by Wu Di Mountain, Speaker of Yangon Region Luto, at Myanmar Expo Hall in Yangon on 5th December morning. The International Expo was scheduled from 5th to 7th December. Feed and feed additive products and the materials related to feed, farm and meat processing and materials for storing grains were on display at the expo. It mainly intends those who are locally carrying out agriculture and livestock to come and observe. Ode Mountain Speaker of Yangon Region Luto urged those who are doing agriculture and livestock breeding professions to carry out their tasks with interest and improve livestock breeding related products by learning technology from foreign countries. Ode Mountain Speaker of Yangon Region Luto said. <laughs> Organizing such expo is very good. Our country has a vast area of undertaking livestock breeding. There are a large number of areas to do agriculture as well as large products in our country. Our citizen will come to know knowledge about how to do from learning such expo, and they become interested in it. Cows are bred in India. Milk is drunk. Three cows are bred and milk is sold. Milk roulette cows were bred in Gambia. We have to drink the milk produced from there. Now, where can we drink milk? Such places have gone. It is required to create the places where to breed cows. In Metila, long time ago, a rich man distributed goats to the villagers to keep them. At that time, goats were produced in large number. By doing this, we can change. Into small and medium-sized businesses, we can achieve success in livestock breeding. Ujo Tui, Vice President of Pathan Township of Myanmar Livestock Federation, who was present at the expo to do learning, said about the current situations of Myanmar livestock breeding arena. We can have chances of directly meeting with the companies, and we can ask many questions of livestock breeding and feeds, for example, chicken breeding. From this, we can get lots of benefits. In Pathan, broiler chickens are mostly bred for enabling those who are carrying out agriculture and livestock breeding to see development. What I said earlier should be taken into consideration. The breeders have financial difficulty. It is important how to provide financial assistance. Market stability and good demand are basic necessities, and the prices of eggs and meat products will have to be stable in the market. Anyhow, if demand is much, breeders will develop. Dr. Tonji, advisor to agriculture and livestock breeding, also gave suggestions that the wide use of technologies is needed. For the development of livestock breeding sector, adding. Myanmar's livestock breeding become more modern now than that in the past, but can keep abreast of international community. We will have to try. We can try ourselves. We need assistance. We can get new contacts from the expos like this. We'll have more accesses to new products and technologies. According to our knowledge about livestock breeding, we will breed pigs, 
chickens and produce feeds. Whatever we produce, we must have technology. We need to study technology widely. We must have the chances of learning technologies too. Unless we have chances of learning technologies, we can't advance. These expos intend us to try to have the chances of learning technologies. There are many conferences in the international community. We will have to go and study there. By studying like this, we will attain benefits. More than 200 companies from 18 countries, including the United States, France, Italy, Germany, the Netherlands, India, China, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Republic of Korea are okay showcase booths from agriculture and livestock breeding along with Myanmar farming implements. The expo was attended by Ute Mountain, Speaker of Yangon Region Ludo, Director General of Livestock Breeding and Veterinary Department LBVD, Livestock Breeding Entrepreneurs, Advisors, and Scholars. That's the report on Agri-Livestock Myanmar 2019, the International Agriculture and Livestock Production Exhibition and Conference, as well as current status on Myanmar agri-livestock sector. And here we have the information on currency rates from Myanmar's central bank. One U.S. dollar is set at 1,503 jets, one Chinese renminbi is at 213 jets, and one euro is at 1,664 jets. One pound sterling is at 1,979 jets, one Singapore dollar is at 1,105 jets, one Malaysian ringgit is at 361 jets, one Thai baht is at 49 jets, and the Indian rupee is at 21 jets. Gold is trading at $1,490, and silver is at $18, and Brent crude oil is at $56. On the Yangon Stock Exchange, FMI is at 11500 MTSH is at 3850 and MCB is at 8300 and FPB is at 22500 and TMH is at 2850 you're with MI Radio's Myanmar today. You can log onto our website at miradio.com.mm and catch all the great programs live on the website. We're also running on FM 96.1 in Yangon, 96.5 in Mandalay, and 96.7 in Nibiru. Or simply download our app so you can listen to our radio programs on the go. Well, we have more reports for you and we're not going to keep you waiting. So let's get down to it. For our third report, in order to get more media engagement for your capital market, media workshop for Myanmar Capital Market was held at Yangon Stock Exchange Hall in Yangon on Thursday. The Securities and Exchange Commission of Myanmar, Yangon Stock Exchange and Myanmar Journalism Institute jointly organized the workshop. JNI reports. With the aim to share awareness to media professionals in Myanmar, media workshop for Myanmar Capital Market was held at Yangon Stock Exchange Hall in Yangon on Thursday. Over 40 senior journalists and editors from both local and foreign media agencies joined the workshop, which was jointly organized by Securities and Exchange Commission of Myanmar SECM, Yangon Stock Exchange YSX, and Myanmar Journalism Institute MGI. Ute Chun, a member of Securities and Exchange Commission of Myanmar, SECM, said. At the end of the month, we have a professional event. Professional event, we have a good team of professional event. Journalists are professional media experts, but nowadays, when it comes to professional experts, they have to continue study for sustainable development, even if they are doctors or engineers. So it's not enough to accomplish a university degree. Only when they keep on studying, getting more updated information, they could be qualified professionals. The attendees may know the content we share today, and we have also shared it among them. But today's workshop is primarily aimed at trying to share updated content under Sustainable Study and Development Program. Upgrade. 
He also explained details about capital market in Myanmar, rules and regulations of stock market, as well as the fundamental requirements to establish a capital market. <laughs> Let me give you clarification on issuing bonds. Well, you can see the ads in newspapers inviting for special bonds by some companies. They're on the radio too, even mentioning how much they can earn for exchange interest payments. But when we check the company, it's not a public company, so that's illegal. But normally, the public can buy these kinds of shares when seeing the ads saying 10 or 15 percent of the interest they will get. Moreover, he also gave details on how foreigners are also allowed to invest in YSH. The official statement came out on 9th September, according to which foreigners can trade the stock shares of YSH listed companies. Senior executive manager of YSX, U Tatun U, also talked to media, calling for more reports on YSX or foreign stock exchanges. And he also urged media professionals to focus on stock market indexes, while at this moment only a few media in the country give stock exchange reports. <laughs> When it comes to stock exchange, there may be at margins stock indices starting from at least one. A stock index is simply a digit which represents the trading volume of stocks in a day. By checking the index condition up and down, we can easily compare with the previous days as well as figure out for monthly or yearly evaluation. The workshop was aimed to promote media engagement in the related field as it plays a crucial role in developing capital market of the country. And there are also plans for follow-up programs in order to share updated information. That's the report on the media engagement in capital market and key excerpts from the recent media workshop for Myanmar Capital Market. Here is the last report, which is a special story on Nancy Gong Home for the Aged and Heaven for the Elderly in Need. Nancy Gong Home for the Aged organizes fun fair on Saturday. The house has been celebrating the fun fair for 58 times since a few years after its founding day. The fun fair drew thousands of people to a hectic atmosphere of food stalls, traditional music, and a named performance. And the fun fair commerce also donate for the elderly people in need. Let's take a look at more on the festival and the historical and factual details of the Yangon's famous facility for the aged. Ninzi Gong, Home for the Aged, is one of the home for the aged for the elderly in need in Yangon. Now, 44 elderly men and 115 elderly women are provided care at the Ninzi Gong Home for the Aged, which is one of the most well-known aged care facilities among the public in Yangon. The facility can provide care to 200 elderly people, and now only about 150 elderly people are there. The aged care home being under the renovation has been a reason behind the facility not housing the elderly to its full capacity. Wu Wen, secretary of the Nim Gong Home for the Aged, told this to MI Radio at its 58th fun fair on Saturday. The home currently houses over 44 elderly men and 115 elderly women. The actual capacity of the facility is about 200. We have not been able to house the full capacity of 200 as the house has been renovated. That's 80 elderly men and 120 elderly women in total. So if an elderly person wants to come live here, and if they comply with the rule of the house here, they are all welcome. Originally established on the 1st January 1933 by Do Uzon, the facility was shut down when World War II occurred. 
Some elderly in need of help took refuge at the abandoned facility. Nyama Alin Daily Newspaper's general manager, Wu Ding, assisted in reopening the house in 1943 with the contribution of some elder monks and donors. The new home, completed in 1955, was formally inaugurated by the former Prime Minister Wu Nu in March 1957. The facility can house over 200 elderly people, and once hit the record high of 240 elders. Wu Angdan, chairperson of Nancy Gong Home for the Age, said, "As everybody might be aware, it is not easy to provide care to the elderly people. We have to manage a proper diet for them and their comfort. Also, we have to manage plans to help them engage in religious practice. The most important thing is their health. As the age exceeds 70 years, we need to take care of their health very carefully." Now the house is home to 17 elderly men and 36 elderly women aged 70 through 72, 22 elderly men and 60 women who are aged 80 through 89, and 22 elderly people who are aged 90 through 99, and one 101-year-old woman and a 105-year-old woman. The fun fair started in 1959 and has been held every December of the year. This year, the 66 charity shops participated, and seven shops are from religious associations, 23 social and voluntary associations, and three from schools, three from offices, nine from companies, six traditional and four medicine shops, and 39 other shops. The fun fair commerce also buy food and donate at the shops, as well as contribute cash donation to the home. The country's traditional singing performance by the famous singer and Anya, which is a theatrical performance, is a special highlight of this year event. Bidu Lodo representative of a hand township, regional Lodo representative, and chairman and vice chairman of the Ninzi Gong Home for Age attended the event. The cash donations were handed over to the elderly people at home, and including the oldest senior citizens at the facility. This is Agajo reporting for Myanmar International Radio. That's all the reports we have for today. We're now going to look into some international news here on Myanmar today. In international news, Shoras Sukar, chairman of the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region government in northwest China, voiced his condemnation of the U.S. House of Representatives' approval of a Xinjiang-related bill during a press conference on Monday, calling it gross interference of the Washington in China's internal affairs. For Xinjiang local officials, including Shu Shuisakar, met with journalists to talk about the region's stability and development. They gave key facts and figures. Arkin Tunia's vice chairman of the Xinjiang Autonomous Region's government slammed reports saying that Muslims' freedom of religious belief was restricted and mosques were dismantled in Xinjiang. These claims totally confuse the right with wrong, as respecting and protecting freedom of religious belief is a basic state policy of China. Governments at all levels in Xinjiang continue to improve the public service conditions of mosques. Noted in Tunis, stressing that religious believers and non-believers are equal in enjoying political, economic, and cultural rights in Xinjiang. A technology giant SoftBank has reportedly agreed to sell its stake in dog walking app Wag. If confirmed, it would mark another disappointment for SoftBank's Vision Fund investment arm. It caps off a year in which the Japanese company investment decisions have been heavily criticized. The failure of the planned sale of shares in the WeWork office leasing service has come under particular scrutiny. SoftBank declined to comment on the reports. Wag did not immediately reply to a request for comment. You're with MI Radio's Myanmar today. Thanks for joining me. Have a good day. Goodbye now.